Well, this is weird. Do you see it? You sure you don't see it? Because I see it. What about the next one? This is in Manila North Cemetery. And can you spot what's wrong with the people driving on that lane? No? Okay, here's what's wrong. They're driving on the wrong side. <sighs> Originally I made a lot of preparations for this video with video footage, um, documents and everything. But at the end I thought, what the heck, I just show you, okay? It's not just people jaywalking or driving on the wrong side. It's also these people driving without helmets. Or drivers switching lanes or turning left without using their indicators. The problem isn't, as a lot of people say, Filipinos lack discipline. The problem is that Filipinos lack proper street education. For example, even though most of my friends have driver's licenses, not one of them knows what the speed limit inside cities is. And it's the lack of proper training and infrastructure that causes all of these traffic jams in the Philippines and also is the leading cause for all of these street casualties. So I was thinking, how can you solve the situation? And I got to the conclusion that maybe looking abroad and see how other people deal with traffic might be a way to solve this. Hey there, my name is Gauli and today we'll be looking at traffic. So in order to do this properly, I decided to look at a country that's about the same size and population and area as the Philippines are. So here goes nothing, let's look at Germany. This is Cologne, a marvelously beautiful city with a lot of artwork there. And at first this looks like a pretty normal intersection until you realize that the traffic lights are off. Yes, that's no joke, look at the traffic lights, they're all turned off. This is actually from a 20 minute plus video here on YouTube and it's amazing how fluid the traffic is. Nobody's cr creating new lanes, nobody's getting stuck, nobody's doing anything really. The traffic is just going. And a lot of people will tell you that it's because Germany is a rich country, but that's not why it's like this. Germans are just very well educated when it comes to road safety and road procedure. Just look at the cop car that can drive by without having to regulate the traffic. Or check out this ambulance. Or this other police vehicle. And if you think that it's amazing that Germans are this disciplined, it's not. It actually has to do quite a lot with how they're educated from very young on. Even more remarkable is that the way they achieve this is not actually an expensive one. So how do they do it? German police officers regularly visit each class in every elementary school to teach kids about road safety and proper street conduct. Additionally, all children have to learn how to ride a bicycle and will be tested on how to identify road safe bikes from others and ultimately have to participate in a practical bicycle exam. In some cities, the police lends out the bicycles to the children doing the practice lessons and the exam and the kids don't have to pass the examination at all. The point of it all is that they will be familiarized with the basic traffic laws and will know how to keep themselves safe on their way to or from school. And with all of that training and provided they pass the driving exam, the following becomes possible. knew what the fast lane was. Think again. Now, the Autobahn on Modern Marvels. Welcome to the Autobahn. The only freeway in the world where 212, a speed that police helicopters can't match, is perfectly legal. This is the ultimate driver's fantasy land. Not just for professionals, but for anyone with a license. 
A kind of bizarro world where all the basics are in reverse. It's actually illegal to drive too slow. But there are no limits at all for thousands of miles of Autobahn on how fast you can go. Weird and counterintuitive as it seems, driving without limits, at least as it's practiced in Germany, is as safe and possibly safer than the more conservative approach favored by the rest of the world. I think generally uh, the average American looks at the Autobahn as, you know, Germany's way of population control. And ultimately, if you look at it statistically, it's very safe to drive on the Autobahn, and especially the last 10, 15 years, it's scored consistently a lower death rate than our American interstate. The Germans uh, permit much higher speeds, but uh, force uh, much more rigid controls in how you behave on the highways in terms of lane discipline. Here, you can meander all over all the lanes and uh, wherever you want to go, provided you drive within the posted limits. They have a law that they call, it's Rechtsfahren, drive right. You can only drive in the right-hand lane and pass in the left. And that's the law. If you pass on the right, you can be pulled over and given a ticket. And so everybody rigidly observes this. So the slower traffic is always to the right, and there's never a, a left lane bandit or a slowpoke sitting in the left lane blocking traffic. Autobahn drivers don't just drive right. They drive with a distinctive concentration and focus, one that 100 plus miles an hour has a way of quickly inducing. And it's much harder to get a driver's license here. Individual driver's training is mandatory. And the license itself, which you have to be 18 to get, costs between $1,500 and $2,000. So yeah, getting a driver's license in Germany is expensive, the lessons take up a lot of time, you have a theoretical and practical exam, and you're only allowed to flunk each one twice. If you want to go a third time, you first need to get a medical and psychological examination first. This sounds like a lot of hassle, but this way nobody underestimates the exam nor the responsibility that comes with the license. It's also notable that each vehicle class requires you to take additional classes and that after getting your license, a two-year testing period begins in which your license can be revoked if you mess up. I mean, look at how Germans respond when there's an ambulance. And of course, there are other traffic jam causing problems like infrastructure. As you can see here in Bulacan, the municipality neglected the infrastructure for decades on end, which led to way too small roads with way too many vehicles on them, without any sidewalks for pedestrians. But that's a topic for another video. My name's Goldie, thank you for watching.